week for Shohei Otani. Eight RBIs at the plate one night, 13 strikeouts and eight shutout innings on the mound the next night. It goes without saying this has never been done in Major League Baseball. And it brings up a question now being asked. If Otani makes it to free agency, and that could happen after next year, what is he worth? Well, the answer is quite a bit. I'm going to give you a number, though. First, though, do a little digging in. Before we run some comps, it has to be noted that Otani is now excelling at pitching and hitting at the same time. I don't just mean within the same season. This is a big distinction. He is doing both at the highest level within each week. Even Babe Ruth didn't do that in the two years he pitched and hit. But no matter how good you think Otani is, he does something that lets you know he's even better than you thought. His last start. Wednesday night was a masterpiece. Let's pick it up first inning. After giving up two hits, watch this to Bobby Witt, who gets gassed at 97. I want you to remember that pitch, high fastball. Later that inning, stuns Hunter Dozier. Got him looking. Remember that as well, because the most called strikes Otani has had this year is 19. The most he's had in any game in his career, and he's had some gems, is 22. In this game, Otani had 32 called strikes. That's 32 times a hitter was so fooled by the pitch, he just watched a hittable pitch go by into the strike zone. No pitcher this year has had more in a single game, and only Adam Wainwright, with his still stunning curveball, has as many. Otani wasn't overpowering the Royals. This was beautiful to watch. He was fooling them. He was in complete command, throwing everything he had with complete conviction. Second inning, he strikes out the side. Now, these are all swinging strikeouts, right? But he's fooling them too. Up, down, in, and out. Let's go to the fourth inning now. MJ Melendez, stunned. Same inning. Dozier, again, waving at it. You know, Mike Matheny, the Royals manager, said after the game, Otani had three different sliders, a cutter, a curveball, that he could hit 100, but he didn't even need to. A little later on, Kyle Isbell in the fifth, 2-2, two -two, got him looking. Otani would have five strikeouts looking to the seventh. Melendez again, this is a 3-2 pitch, and this, all right, that's a tough call. Well, that's a perfect pitch. And with two outs in the inning, Otani is feeling it. Dozier, by the way, Hunter Dozier's having a good year, but Otani's the boss out there. He's thinking his way through this game. Total conviction. That first inning strikeout was the only one on a fastball. Everything else is breaking stuff. It's a mind game. And finally, eighth inning, two outs, his final batter, Emmanuel Rivera, changes the height and stuns him. 13 strikeouts, five of them looking, eight shutout innings. He retired 23 of the final 24 batters. I showed you that because this is another level for a player who's already an ace. Mastery on the mound. So the question eventually will be, what do you pay this guy? And the answer is, well, how much do you have? But wait, there are answers. Let's break it down. Over his five years in the U.S., Otani is slugging 529. That's healthy. Over 1,900 plate appearances. His OPS plus is 137. And how fascinating is this? Over his 252 innings pitch, the ERA plus is 138. League average for these park adjusted numbers is 100. So his hitting is 37% better than league average, and his pitching is 38% better than league average. Incredibly similar, and yet both are at an all star level. So we tried to find the best comparisons to Otani. You need two people, one doesn't do it. So taking into account his age, his level of hitting and run prevention, and the volume of work, here's who we have. As a position player, he is offensively comparable to Matt Olson, the new Braves first baseman. Since 2018, Olson has an OPS plus of 130. That's a bit lower than Otani, but he also has 500 more plate appearances. That matters too. Olson can field, run a bit, hit for power with an okay but not great on base. Olson also just did a contract extension, so we have numbers to use. How about pitchers? Otani's best comp, I believe, Kevin Gaussman. Otani, Gaussman, and Joe Musgrove all have the same war over the last two years and a similar ERA+. Plus. But Gaussman also just hit the market, so we have numbers. Gaussman, last two years, has the same ERA+, plus as Otani. Still 139, very close, and 140. It's just right there. So, it's not as simple as just adding these two salaries together. Well, maybe it is. Otani is still just one man. And he's missed two seasons of pitching due to injury. If he hurts his knee, let's say, both the hitter and the pitcher would be out. He's a dual talent, but he's still one guy. But if you believe the production can hold up, and these are the by and large numbers, here's what it looks like. Olsen, through a good part of his deal, will make $21 million a year. He did a contract extension with two years before free agency, so he didn't have full leverage, but it's basically $21 million a year. Gosman was a free agent, and the Blue Jays on the open market paid him five years, $110 million. That's $22 million a year. 
So that's your raw answer. If you think Otani can be an ace and a slugger at the same time, keep it together year by year. He's worth somewhere in the neighborhood of two players who combine for $43 million per year. That'd be a record salary, but again, this man is doing things that have never been done.